Hello and happy Friday. We are in the studio today and we are going to be learning all about the world of plushies. I call them plushies. Sometimes softies is what people call them or some hand stitching details, embroidery. We're going to go all over all these steps with our amazing student. Can I call you a student? Yeah, you can, I can be a student today. <laughs> a student. I like to call these afternoon crafting sessions, especially because it's Friday, our crafternoon. Maybe we can toy that idea. Yeah, <laughs> let's play around with it. <laughs> a crafternoon with Kira, and we are going to learn. I'm going to show Kira the steps um, so you can craft along with us. Grab your supplies. We have the downloadable pattern, which of course has all the instructions that we will be going through today in the download. It's also on the Craftsy page. Um, but let's get started. Yes, I'm so, excited. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so Kira's never, you've never done hand stitching before. I haven't, no. So I have no idea what, like, <laughs> any terms, anything we're doing. Perfect. So in the instructions, of course, like I said, you will have all the actual handwritten instructions. This is the PDF to download, but there's also the pattern. And the one thing that I'm just going to back up for two seconds. If you know me or met me or have done anything live on any of the platforms with me, you know how much I love felt. And so I think that sewing with felt is one of the easiest things and it's actually how I teach my kids to sew. And the reason is, is because, okay, so if you think about these are just the various different softies that we have or plushies that we have. If you were to use any other kind of fabric, it frays on the edge. So the thing with felt is that you can cut it and you don't have to worry about the edge. You can just glue it or stitch it right on and there's no like need to finish the edge to make sure that it's all like tucked under or whatever finished. So it's more of like a decorative, I would say, yeah. way to do things, which I really love. And of course it comes in a million different colors, which I love. <laughs> oh, we're a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so with, I'm just gonna give a little caveat about the pattern. The thing I've learned is that kids love to learn to stitch and of course adults love to learn to stitch. Mm -hmm. So the pattern that we have is a little bit on the smaller side because it's it can be used as like, we have the made of the keychains. I have another one here that I stuffed with lavender and I tuck it in my um, sock drawer. So when you pull your socks out, they smell really good. <laughs> There's just a tip. Um, I also have some little earrings. I don't know if you can see these little um, pizza earrings on. So the range of stuffies can be obviously super small to super big. And whenever I start teaching people, especially if they're kids, um, bigger is better because, you know, like we uh, as adults have fine motor skills that mm -hmm. we've developed <laughs> for our childhood. But little kiddos, my daughter's in kindergarten, she is learning right now and her skills are not quite there, right? She's just learning to, to actually write things like mm -hmm. the alphabet, right? So I would say um, err on the side of bigger for kids and then we're doing something a little bit smaller. So this pattern we have right now is a little bit on the smaller side, but if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I wanna do this with my grandkid or my neighbor or my daughter's birthday party friends, whatever, um, I would just say what you can do when you're printing the pattern is you can enlarge it in like the printer screen and make it bigger, make it as big as you want, print it as big as you want because the bigger the better for kids. And I have this, um, we were saying, look at the earrings match the plushie. <laughs> because I'm teaching a group of third and fourth graders right now how to make pizza plushies. And the way that I start out with them, or had started out with mm -hmm. them, or am starting out with them, is I'm actually having them glue their toppings on. So we're learning just one stitch, which is the first stitch we're gonna start with today. Okay. Um, so you kind of start simple and work bigger. And you can make this project as complicated, or as not complicated as you want. <laughs> And if you want to make it easy, 100%, just use glue, hot glue, fabric glue. Probably Elmer's glue would probably. Elmer's? Know, maybe. That would work. I feel like I feel like Elmer's glue works for almost everything. Ooh. Although it might soak in. Oh, into like the, the uh, fibers. Oh. I don't know. Play around with it. The, the goal of this, and I think the fun thing about plushies and stuffies is just to have fun. Mm -hmm. Get creative. Get crafty. Move your hands. Work those muscles. Get your crafting memory going. And away we go. So, okay, there's a few questions um, coming in. There's one question. We're going to actually leave that one for a second. But okay, the first thing we're going to do is actually cut the pattern out, which we have done. So on the very last page of your PDF pattern, right? And it says on here, outside cut two, hand cut one. And the one thing I want to note is it says on the pattern is only cut the outside of the hand. Because if you see on the, the plushie that yeah. we have, we're using the stitching to create the other hand 
like the outlines of the fingers. Oh. So like the stitching translates right to the outline of the finger. So we're just, when we're cutting, we're only cutting the outside. Okay. So I want you to pick your color of your hand you want to do and then your background. Okay. So get that started. Um, and there's a couple ways that I feel like you can pin. So we have traditional pins. So grab your background color. I know you said you love blue. Yes. Ooh, I like this one a lot. <laughs> Ooh, okay, there it is. There it is. This royal. So what blue. I like to do, turn it over and make sure there's no sticker on it. Sometimes when you buy these, you know, sheets of felt, there's stickers on them. So what I like to do is if you fold your, I'm going to grab a background color here. Ooh, ooh, look at this sparkly pink. Ooh, I like that ooh, a lot. Ooh, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to actually cut it in half quick so that I can layer them. And when you are traditionally sewing something, there's always a right side and a wrong side of the fabric, right? Okay. Like the patterned floral side will be the right side of the fabric, and the wrong side would be like the inside, which becomes the inside of your shirt. So how, Exactly. Felt does not have a right or wrong side. Oh. Although I say that, and I'm actually eating my words because there's <laughs> glitter on one side. <laughs> and not glitter on the other. So, but what I want you to do is put your, if you have something like this where there's glitter or a pattern on your felt, put your wrong sides out. You're just going to fold it in half. Okay, perfect. Yep, just fold it in half. Yep. And fold it in half to give yourself enough space that when we cut our outside, so you obviously want enough space so that your outside um, this one? shape, yep, outside shape fits on there. Does that feel like it probably fits so that you can yeah. get to? Okay. Yeah, it looks so, like it. This so one. these little clippy dealies, these are, I don't even know what these are called, but they're little clippies. Okay. I mean, use hair them. clips. Yeah, yeah, hair clips. They're kind of like butterfly clips like Ooh. that we had in the 90s. Yes, I <laughs> love those. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, so these ones are awesome for kids, and I mm. always use these to sew um, zippers when you're actually sewing sewing. But we're going to use pins because I want to show you the trick on okay. how we pin. So, so grab a straight pin. This one? Okay. Yep. And I would say give yourself, I mean, we're going to maybe want to pin one, two, probably two or three times on here. So let's maybe start at the top up here. And this is how I teach people to pin. Poke through so that you're through all the layers, but not okay. don't push your pin all the way in. So poke through. See how it's like a little bit? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Poke through. Like that? Yep, exactly like that. And then you're going to like fold your fabric in half. Like so, like pinch it. Okay, like that? Yep. And then you're going to kind of wiggle your, your pin straight, which will make it so you can poke all the way through right here. Oops. Yep, you're fine. So the first one's always hard because it feels like the fabric moves. Yep, so pinch, pinch your fabric totally together. Oh, okay. With yep, yep, yep. Perfect. Yep. So now it's through... Yep, out and then, here? Yep, well then, yep, so then you're going to wiggle your, your pin so it kind of becomes straight and then poke all the way through. Yeah, just like that. Except for, make sure you're poking through the other direction here. Let me show you. Yeah. Here. So you're going to want to poke through, because you went this way, because mm -hmm. we don't want to cut over oh, the pin, okay. right? So here, I'm going to show on the camera. So we want to poke through so that the, the entirety of the pin lands inside, just because you're, you'll oh. totally dull your scissors, which... I've done before. Mm. <laughs> All right, yeah, that makes more right? sense looking so, at that way. Yep, so we're going to pull it out just a little bit and look at it holds. The goal is to have your pin come through the back and the front. And actually, okay, perfect. I feel like this is one of those things that like, oh my gosh, wow, once you get it down, it's like a life skill to be able to pin something in place. Okay, so grab Ooh, another pin. Fun one. I know. I know. These I think those are quilting pins. I don't Ooh. really Actually, no. <laughs> I just have them. So let's do the same on the other side. Okay. So poke it through so that it's coming out the back. Yep. And then fold your fabric in half. Yep, there we go. And then just poke through the other side. Oh, I don't think I... Did you not poke all the way through? I... Oh, yep. Ooh, there we go. Perfect. And then... Yep, fold in half. And sometimes when you even fold, sometimes the pin will start poking out the other. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <gasps> da, nice. da, da, da. I didn't even poke myself I either. Know. Actually, that's a question that um, Dawn has. Any tips on not poking yourself? I mean, I feel like just try and keep your fingers as best as you can away from the pokey part of the pin. Uh -huh. But if you're teaching kiddos, I'm, I'm serious. These little clippies work really well. And so how I use them typically is I will cut the fat, kind of pre-cut the fabric a little bit and like the general shape and then kind of pin it for the kids and they'll it'll be a lot easier so this is what we used when i taught the little kids how to how to sew so then all we're going to do is so you have your two pieces of fabric uh -huh. and your pattern piece and all you're going to do is grab your scissors and we are just going to cut along the outside okay yeah and um 
when you're cutting, this is something I always tell people, it's so easy to want to just like snip, 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 snip with little, little snips. Uh -huh. Actually, the, the sharpest part of your scissors, from what I understand, and somebody can totally correct me if I'm wrong, is actually the middle, like the middle to like forward-ish. I mean, these really? are lower scissors, right? So, do I cut it with the uh, felt too? Yep, so you're gonna oh. cut the whole thing at one time. So I'm not actually cutting so that my scissors snip all the way through because look mm -hmm. at, it's not gonna actually cut the yeah. fabric, right? So I just kind of open my scissors, cut a little bit, open my scissors, cut a little bit, open my scissors, cut a little bit, and that will get a nice smooth cut. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Oh my gosh, exactly like yes. that. Yes. I'm so proud of myself. I know, isn't it? Is This is part of crafting that is like kind of the best, is the, the like excitement. I know, this is exciting. <laughs> I'm like, woo, I'm gonna be professional soon. Yes, we are. Okay, so background pieces. This fancy fabric is really fun. I like it. I know, this is so pretty too, like the color. Uh-huh, it's awesome. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect. And those are, sharp scissors are kind of key to working with felt. So, I mean, if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm teaching my kiddo and they're really, really little, obviously if you feel like it's the safest for you to do the cutting, please do. Don't feel like you have to make them do all the steps if you're feeling like it's a safety concern. Um, oh, we have another a viewer, Dawn, also says she loves using these clips. I, you know, I don't even know what they're called, but I keep calling them butterfly clips. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because of the 90s that is <laughs> <laughs> that just rearing you about. up. Okay, here's a tip, and, and as you're cutting, I'm going to explain this. So for a lot of my softies, you absolutely can use um, polyfill or stuffing of some kind. What I like to do sometimes, so I save all of these little scraps, right, from little things I've made with my kids or, you know, whatever. I sometimes, these, these scraps become awesome stuffing materials. I know it's Earth Day, so obviously recycle, reduce, reuse. <laughs> but I do feel like sometimes if you have a kiddo that you're like, oh my gosh, they don't want to cut out the actual piece, you can get them and just get them um, working on, you know, a little side project of snipping up all of your little loose ends of, of felt that you're probably not gonna use for a different project. And this can become stuffing. This is what we're gonna use today because I feel like all these little pieces mm -hmm. can be used for something. So don't throw away your little pieces as you're cutting. You can just set it aside. Okay, how are we doing? Uh, good, I so um, have to ooh, fix it up. But Oops. this is exactly it. Exactly how it should be. Is oh, it is? You, yep, no, that's no, 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 keep going, keep going. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No, that's exactly it. Because if you feel like, oh my gosh, there's a spot that doesn't look right, go ahead, get your scissors back in there. Yeah. Keep okay. Cutting. I see that. Just keep cutting. Yep. And and Ooh. even if you take it, if we if we go to take our pins off, and you're like, oh my gosh, that side doesn't look right, just mm -hmm. give it a little trim. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason that it has to be exactly to the size of the pattern. But yeah, you're doing awesome. Oh, I love it. Mm. I love that blue. That's a good blue. Ooh, thank have you, you. decided um, on your hand color yet? We kind of have um, a handful of skin tone options. We have, oh, this is actually kind of like very peach. This is like mermaid princess color, which feels very like aerial Ooh. color, like that one. We have orangey. Are you able to get this part? Yes, I can. Thank yeah, you. Some, yeah, some of these parts. Okay, this is a great question. I love that. Yeah, can I steal yours? Yes. They're sharper. Okay, so this little corner right here, this little nook is a little bit tricky, right? Because you have a thicker piece of felt. So what you can do is just leave it as like a more graduated curve. Or what I like to do is come from both sides. So come from this direction and then it's like you're kind of notching it out a little bit and then come from that direction. And sometimes it does take a little bit of hand control just to have to be able to stop your... Um, you're cutting, you know, in that way, but look at, it's your background. Yes. It's beautiful. Okay. Keep your background pattern piece. Okay. And then, um, for the front of the hand, so the, the, the hand itself, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is because we're using our stitching to actually make our outline, I would say you don't need to cut exactly on the lines. You can cut okay. a little bit bigger, which might be might easier. Help. Exactly. So, Grab a, I'm gonna actually do this like bright pinkish kind of color. I'll do, I like this color. Yeah, like, that's good. Do that's, you think this would look good? Yeah. Oh, very much. Okay. I love it. 
And we only need one, um, one layer, so we don't need two. So sometimes if you have a big piece like that, yeah. if you want to cut off something that's a little bit smaller so it feels more manageable, okay. absolutely do that because I feel like that's going to be... could wear this with like a, a dress or a skirt. It's so <laughs> long. <laughs> It's, you know, sometimes it, when you go to big box stores, you can either buy a lot of this felt by like the square mm. or by the yard. And for whatever reason, I guess that <laughs> came <laughs> yeah. in the yard. Yeah, Should yeah. I like do? Okay. It, I don't know that it matters because I feel like, um, yeah, you can 100% use the extra for filling if you absolutely Ooh. have to. Okay. But there's no rhyme or reason as to how. Yeah. Love it. So this cutting part, I feel like. Um, just put there. Yeah, go okay. for it. Yeah, throw it on the ground. There we go. This cutting part is the same with the um, pins. So grab a couple pins. And, and this is an interesting shape because we have the two, you know, fingers, mm -hmm. finger t tendrils, the Peace situation, side. right? So I would say let's put one pin this way, one pin this way, and one pin across. Okay. So start by poking through. Okay. And then fold it like your fingers are going backwards. Yep. And then go and through. Then, yep, poke right up. <gasps> yep. Ah. yep. And just pull it. So the only thing is maybe like, yep, pull it all the way out and start. See how I started my first poke that's closer oh. down here? Okay. Because the goal is to get your pin uh, like all the way on to your pattern So piece. like down there? Yes, perfect. Okay. That's absolutely perfect. Yep, fold it in half. And then poke through. Da, 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 da. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Yep. And the reason we're doing both fingers is just because when you're cutting, you don't want the fabric to fling around. You want you want oh. the fingers because they're extensions mm -hmm. kind of of the pattern. So we'll do the same for the other finger. So grab okay. another pin, poke down here by this thumb area. Perfect. And then fold. Be careful not to poke yourself. On yeah. The other one. I just maybe we should have done it opposite. Kathy says you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, here we go. And then poke out. We have a few yes. questions on sort of the beginnings of like starting to sew softies or plushies. Mm -hmm. And um, this is this easy. And I, I feel like it is a, an easy beginner sewing learn to hand sew kind of yeah, project. Yeah, definitely right? is. Yeah. So, okay, so we have an option. You can absolutely... Do, put another pin this way, or it feels kind of sturdy. The reason, I mean, it feels kind of sturdy to me, right? Okay. Okay. So then let's begin. And when I'm cutting, I don't know if I explained this before, but I like to kind of hold my pattern plush to my fabric. And I don't, this is just how I choose. Some people I think hold it with all their fingers and mm -hmm. hold the thumb, but as long as you have part of your hand on top and part of your hand on bottom, because the purpose of a pattern is really just to make the outline right like yeah. on the fabric so i happen just to like holding either my thumb and forefinger pointer finger thumb you, and the pointer yeah, yeah i think wow i did not remember <laughs> what that was called thumb and pointer finger on top or sometimes i hold it like this but either way as long as you're kind of clasping it so that it's nice and flat because what you don't want to happen is to be cutting out your pattern and then your felt to kind of pull away so then this one, you don't really get around these. I things. would say, yeah, I would say um, give yourself a little bit of space. Like if it's a lot of space, okay. it's a lot of space. As long as it's even. Um, yeah, but see, like I'm not probably going to cut these exact knuckles. I'm just going to make like a general shape like okay. that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because we're going to do the... Now, if you're not adding in these additional details with the stitching, you might want to be more precise with your cutting. But this is, it'll probably look like a blob, <laughs> to be honest. And if you want to just cut straight across up here, you absolutely can. Okay, yeah, and then just go in. Yep, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yeah, exactly. So that's exactly right. How to manage these sort of little details when you're, when you're cutting is to m make the shape as simple as possible and then make indents. That's kind of how, like you, okay. like we had with the little corner. So, and again, you can make this project honestly as simple or as complicated. And if you're like, no, I actually want to print the hand with a Sharpie. That's also fine too. <laughs> and then you glue the, the hand on. That's also fine too. As, as simple or as complicated as you want to make this is really, yeah, see, look at you go. And like I said before, if these shapes are feeling too hard to cut out, feel free to print them and 
um, enlarge or, or you know, print at 200% or 300% or whatever that screen is in your printing um, menu or whatever the pre-printing menu because that will make it so that the shapes are chunkier okay. and chunkier. Look at, look at how easy that was. That was pretty easy. Should I do this part two, do you think? Like I, you, you can if you want. I don't know that it really super matters, but if you, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at your shape and you think, yeah, that would be way better, then absolutely. Yeah. Oh, love it. You're doing amazing. Okay. So then pull your pins. Are you not done on this I side? I might do this one a okay, little bit. Perfect. Yeah, so see how Kira cut the shape a little bit more generic and then she's notching it out? That's exactly what should happen. Exactly. Perfect. Now pull your pins off and we can get to embroidering Ooh. or stitching. So there's a couple different kinds of stitches that I'm going to show you. But as you can see, if you pull your patterns off okay. and grab one of your background pieces right side out, you can kind of start to see how this is going to come together. So place your finger, yep, on there. Are you opposite? Uh, Yours is inverted, so oops, flip it. Not okay. that it maybe really matters, but then, um, so grab the other piece. Yep, and then put your, so because remember when we cut two different, two, two of these? Yeah. So that it probably just got flipped the other way here. I'm going to yeah, notch this out. Just a second. Do those fingers, do you think they need to be like circular more? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's a good, that's you a should, good observation. You that part for I me? absolutely will. Thank you. Here, I'm just going to go like this. Okay. Make them a little bit more circular. And that's something that sometimes as you're cutting, it's actually kind of hard to see if there's a pattern mm -hmm. over top. So it's so common that I'll get done with something and go, oh boy, I need to change that or whatever. Yeah. Move that around or cut that differently or something. So here we go. So. Look at Okay, that's I really cute. It. It's really cute. Okay, so we're gonna take so take the top layer of your background. Okay, this one? The yep, just one layer of the background, and then set your other layer aside. Because the the whole idea of the plushie is that we have obviously a front and a back, and when we put them together, it's gonna be stuffed with something in the middle. Oh right, yeah. and that's what makes it plush. So there's two sides, you know, a back and a front. And whenever you're making something, like I said, if you want to make it easy and you just want to glue toppings on, mm -hmm. or to toppings, I say, because <laughs> of pizza. That's what I did with these. This is just, these are glued on the top and then stitched on the edge. This is glued on the top and stitched on the edge. Um, either way, whether you embroider like that or you mm -hmm. glue, the idea of making a plushie is that you're kind of decorating the top like a cookie, oh, right? Yes, you're decorating yes. the top like a cookie and then we're putting them together. So this back background piece we don't need until the very, very end. Okay, so, perfect. Right. And the, the only thing that I would say is even just like even a teensy, ouncy, tricky about this pattern is just visualizing where these fingers go. And like if you're, if you're referencing your um, pattern that we cut from, visualizing yeah. where the fingers go. It's right here. So I would say, um, think in your brain. I always say this to kids, think in your mind before you decide. Yeah, I need <laughs> Think to. in okay. your mind before you decide what color you want your stitching to be. Obviously, it can be as eclectic as like neon pink, or you can go with like a Ooh. simple dark brown. Um, I'm actually going to go with this like blue color. I think mm. that would be really fun. And I am using, we are using embroidery floss today. Okay. And I love to stitch with embroidery floss because it's chunky. Like it's a thick embroidery floss is, I think it's like, eight strands technically of it like is. yeah i mean because i think okay i think if you're a true embroider embroiderer em mm. embroiderer embroiderer that you, when you're embroidering you like separate your stitches and your your or I, you separate your string we're not yeah. going to do that today because i okay. like how thick this is so yeah pull the wrapping off of each side so this is for embroidering yeah this is for, this is embroidery floss oh. also also for friendship bracelets, in case you were like me and made 900 million friendship bracelets in the yes. course of your life and had them hanging off of your Nalgene bottle mm -hmm. at camp, yep. that was 100% me. So there those. should be an end. Yeah, mine's like a little. Oh, that's okay. This is, how, this is how all good crafters craft supply looks. Is like you pull it out and it's just all tangled. Okay, okay, so we have an end. And I like to tell people don't start with something that is like the longest in the world because it's just going to get tangled. So a yard is good, I think. And a yard is about the tip of your nose to the end of your finger. Like ish. I know this is <laughs> <laughs> right. Tip of your nose, the end of your finger and just give it and then, you know, maybe a tiny bit more and then cut it. 
And you can use, I mean, regular string for this. You could use yarn. Yarn would only just be a little bit harder to pull through, but if you're teaching with kiddos, that would be really easy. Um, and then we need sharper needles. So I have two needles right here. Okay. Here's a needle and it's sharp on the end. And here's, here's a needle. And there's different kinds of needles. Um, darning needles are often easy to, let me show you a trick on how to thread your needle. Can I show you this yeah. real quick? Okay. So if you're, if you're teaching kiddos how to thread your needle, or if you need to know how to thread a needle, grab a piece of paper. Can I show you yeah. with yours? Or actually, no, you do it with me. Okay. Hello. You do it with me. <laughs> Okay, grab, grab a piece of paper, like a st thin strip of paper, and fold it in half like this. So it's just a folded piece of paper. Okay. Looks like a piece of confetti. Stick your string into the bottom most folded part. Yep, and it can come out the other end. It doesn't matter how much string you have in there. Yep, just like that. Mm -hmm. And pull out so there's like a little bit of a tail. There you go. And then all you're gonna do, mine needs to be thinner, hang on. Does this look good? Yeah. All you're going to do is, eh. okay, clearly the tiny little piece of paper is tricky, is <laughs> stick, rather than sticking the end of your, your thread in there, you're just going to stick the end of your needle, or the end of your paper uh -huh. right through your needle's eye. So here's might be, so this part? Yep. Yep. So just get the paper through there and then pull the paper all the way through, and you should then be able to thread your needle. If I can get it. Getting in. I know, this is the hard part. It's a little tricky. Mm -hmm. if, if your needle, if your thread is starting to separate, give it a little lick, which I know is not like COVID friendly, but just don't share your germs with your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Is it getting in there? No, it's like a little bit. Oh wait, okay, we're making progress. Yeah. Is it maybe too big? Here, let me see. Oh, yeah, it's just a little bit too big. Here, let's try this. Oh. So the key is, I should have said this first, cut your strip of paper no wider than the eye of your needle. Here, just use this one. Okay. Because this one's already cut. So fold it in half. That one's folded in half. Okay. And then here, grab your thread, insert it into your, yep. And you can have as much thread coming out the other side of that piece of paper as you want. And then all you're gonna do is stick your piece of paper through your needle. Oh, okay, this would be easier. Yep, there you go. Stick it through, ta 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 ta, and then Ooh. pull your paper through, and then take your paper off. Okay. And pull, pull, yep, pull, the, yep, there we go. So there's, there's, I, when, yep, you just threaded a needle. <gasps> <laughs> I feel so proud of myself. Okay, so there's, there's two different parts of your thread um, that are maybe kind of important to know. Okay. Your tail, which is this part, that tail part, and then like your main part, right? And the, the only thing that matters when you're hand stitching is not letting your tail get so short that it comes right out of your eye when you're oh. stitching, but also not letting it get too long that you're stitching with both pieces of thread at the same time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would so, this be a good length then for like the eye? Be, yeah, maybe like a little bit longer, pull a little bit longer through there. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So you can use um, a pin or a clip if you want to hold your hand in place if you want. So remember, stick it through, and I would do it in like the, you know, the meat of the hand down here. Okay. Fold it in half, and then stick your pin out. Ooh, somebody, okay, uh, Lucy just said, if you put chapstick on the end of your needle, on the eye of your needle, it helps thread for the first time Ooh. better. That is like awesome. That's a good tip. I know. I need to try that now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Great tip, Lucy. I really like that. All right. So um, you can either do two different things. You can tie a knot at the end of your string okay. if you really want to, or my grandma used to say, knot is rotten. I don't not know. She was, a, she was a quil quilter, so I think knots and quilts is a bad thing because it adds a knot in your quilt. So here's what I like to tell people to do. To, to anchor your stitch, you just need to make an X two times. So turn your, turn your hand over. Okay. And you're going to make an X by inserting your needle and grabbing a little bit of your thread or a little bit of your fabric. Like that? Yep. And pulling it all the way except for don't pull your thread all the way through. See how I'm, I'm stopping it? So to like write the eye, at the yep, end, the right eye. at the end. 
Yeah, sometimes it's with with felt is a little tricky. You just sometimes okay. have to just like pull. Like that? Yep. So pull pull all the way through. So the end of my needle. Yep. Keep going. So you're not pulling your thread. You're stopping it before the thread comes through the hole. Oh, okay. So yep. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oops. Yeah, you can make your tail as long as you want to make your tail, and then stop. And then you're gonna go make an X. So then you're gonna go the other direction or a plus sign. And then don't pull super hard. Like that? Exactly like that. Yep, and then pull. Yep, keep pulling. Oh, it, yeah, sometimes with, with um, these thicker needles, they have a thicker head on them, so it's just a little bit trickier to get through the fabric. Yep, so pull, pull, pull. Keep pulling. And just don't pull super duper hard. So you're gonna make a plus and a minus. Yep, so keep keep going so it's Oh, so this part doesn't yep. Okay. So basically you're anchoring your stitch. Oh there we go. Interesting. And then you're gonna do just one more the opposite the first direction. And look at. Where you don't have it? to make a knot. So make so go one more the first direction that you went. Oh like right here? Yep. Can I go? Mm -hmm. Yep. Not all the way through. So you're doing oh, one yeah. more. Just like you did the very first thing. You're just like, remember how we made our plus sign? Oh yeah. So I'm not going to the front. I'm just grabbing a little bit of the fabric because all we're doing is anchoring our stitch. Here, will you show me like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're just going like this. Oh. Yep, that's all we're doing. So see how like this is super strong. I'm pulling on mm -hmm. it, but I didn't make a knot. So all you're doing Ooh. is anchoring your stitch so that now it's secure. Okay. There you go. So let's pull your tail through. And thank now you. we're going to get to stitching. So this here is called a running stitch. It's basically up, down, up, down, up, down. And the only thing you have to worry about is the length between the stitches that they're even. Oh. You don't even have to make them even. If you want to make them even, that's what I'd recommend, but you don't have to. So you start, and again, I like to hold my um, uh, fabric in my left hand. Okay. And then I'm holding my needle in my right hand. Because oh, you're right-handed, aren't you? Yeah, I'm right-handed. Okay. Ooh, good. And then all we're going to do is go up. Would I, okay, so since I did mine at the top, would I start yep, there? That, yep, okay. just start at the top. Yep, exactly, exactly. It doesn't matter where. It does not matter where. Okay. I like to start, I mean, if you look at our example here, mm -hmm. you want to start a little bit in from the edge because you don't want your stitches to be, the idea is that you're stitching your hand to okay. the background. Yep, so you want it to be, there we go, perfect. perfect. Now just okay. pull all the way up. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And then you're going to go down. Oh. It's literally that easy. Oh, this is really easy. I know. And, and the, you'll get the hang of um, keeping your stitches even, which is going to be like keep, keeping your stitches, you know, like the same length apart from the edge and the same length. I know. Are you so proud? I'm really proud of myself right <laughs> now. I'm like, woo. I know, right? And you'll get the hang of keeping your stitches, like, like I said, even the same yeah. length distance apart from the edge and then the same length apart. Okay. Yep. So just keep going all the way around. Yeah, I don't, I'm trying to like get it so it goes even. That's and that's where like you know like hand eye coordination sort of practice is going to make um perfect. Because, or perfect, it's going to make better. I don't like that phrase, practice makes perfect, because it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But it's going to make better. Better, yep. okay. And honestly, you're doing amazing. So this is where kids always get tripped up, right? Is mm -hmm. because they're like, but it's, you know, they're doing a huge stitch, and then a tiny stitch, and then a huge stitch. But really, yeah, exactly what you're doing. Okay. You're going to keep going. So the one thing to note as you're going is you're coming down from the top. Yeah. So what I would say is I would go all the way around the outside, and then once you get to the thumb, we'll kind of make our extra little thummy part. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And so it's up, down, up, yep, down? Yep, it's literally just up, down, up, down, up, down. And like I said before, if this is feeling too complicated and all you wanna do is draw with a Sharpie and glue your hand to your background, that's also okay too. Because there's one other stitch that is, oopsies, look at what I just did. I just kept going up. <gasps> <laughs> and I wrapped my... So if this happens, all you have to do is take your needle off of your um, thread or grab a pin mm -hmm. and just carefully pull your thread back out. It's just like any other crafting. Nothing is non-fixable, I feel like. Yeah, Most you can always go is, back. Yep, and everything is fixable. How long have you do, um, been doing hand sewing then? 
I feel, you know, it's, I feel like it's one of those things I learned as, as a, like a teenager or as a kid. Mm -hmm. And it's once you have this sort of skill and this rhythm in your hand, it's, it's easy to put down and pick back up in your life. Right. Yeah. Because the one thing I, I remember in college, the one thing I really wanted to learn was embroidery. And I thought, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this feels really complicated. Mm -hmm. And I learned so fast that it's really just this. So this running stitch we're doing is like the basic stitch that is, yeah. I mean, you can mend a pair of pants with this running stitch. You can well, you hem can. a shirt. Oh my gosh, yeah, you absolutely can. I know. <laughs> that is, wow. So I feel like this stitch is like kind of the basis of a lot of things. And I learned like, oh heck, embroidery is actually just a variation of a couple different stitches mm-hmm. and how you like wrap your thread around your needle and write like all the, the ways that they make it look a lot prettier than I'm giving it credit to. but. Yeah, it's, I mean, now you can go, you could hand sew a dress if you really wanted to, but I feel like that would take forever. <laughs> That'll be my next project, I think. <laughs> Kids and I are listening to the Laura Ingalls Wilder series because my Ooh. daughter's really into it. And she literally just this morning was like, mom, but how did they, how did they, um, how did they go to Target? Did they have cars? And I'm like, oh, honey. Like, oh, no. They made their own clothes by stitching them. They oh, my went to the covered wagon situation or whatever. And like, it's just a whole nother world that I don't even think we understand. No, is she learning about that in school right now? She is, yeah. Aww. So they wanted to listen to the books. And I thought, okay, sure, why not? Audible for the win. <laughs> Audible is so nice. <laughs> Especially for like road trips and everything. Yes, right? And oh, and speaking of road trips, I actually hand stitch a ton on road trips. You do? Mm-hmm. Because, because here's why. It's the needles are bigger, the thread is bigger, and you don't have to finish your edges because we use felt, honestly. Like it's an easy thing and, and you can put in a little Ziploc baggie or a little even like Tupperware container. Mm-hmm. It's all contained. It's not hu- a humongous project, right? Like you yeah. totally could take this on a car trip. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, obviously when I'm not driving, of course. <laughs> Does it ever get hard driving and working this way? Yeah, like, I mean, know? if you're probably like driving on like a mountainous dirt road where mm-hmm. you're bumping around everywhere, <laughs> that would be tricky. <laughs> we have a few questions. Um, Tolly said, this is cute. I'm not good at coming up with ideas, but what else could you make? A heart, a star. Yes, we have, look at how simple this shape is for, for little ideas. This is just a, what is this, half circle? What would you call this, arc? Yeah, an arc. An arc? Yeah. An arc with a flat bottom. Mm -hmm. And this is three different, three different arcs with flat bottoms. And then I added pom-poms to make it a rainbow. So this one's even more simpler than what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I have an ice cream cone right here that my daughter started that she did not finish. (laughs) because she got distracted. So this is a work in progress. And her needles are a lot less sharp because she's six. So her needles are darning needles, which I know a lot of knitters use. So the only thing that makes it trickier is when you're putting your um, uh, needle through the felt, she does it one layer at a time because it just is a little bit harder to get through because it's not as pokey but that's a, that's a really fun one. There's a peace sign. My son had made this one, which his stitching, I was very impressed with that this one. That is very nice. I know, I know. I think I helped him with the edging. I feel like I remember that. We have lips. I mean, obviously some lips, any shape. I have pizzas. This is a really fun, this whole like triangle. I would say, think of simple shapes like circles or um, triangles or squares. And then you always, always can do something on top of it. Like our background shape, could be an oval instead of a more, you know. Like this one? Yeah, it It could totally be an oval if you wanted it to, or a rectangle, or a circle. Uh, So simple shapes are easy. Um, Yeah, and these are, we also have another question of what the end goal is with these. Mm -hmm. And I do have some that are little backpack tags, right? A a keychain, or this is going on a backpack. This is also a backpack. One because it just goes on a keychain. This is a pillow, so bigger ones can be like a little pillow plushie. My daughter has slept with this one because she thinks it's just the greatest. She named it, and I don't remember what she named it. Um, and then this one, like I said, there's lavender, little lavender. So before mm-hmm. I finished sewing it up, you can see where my entry point was. I put some lavender in here, and this has been in my sock drawer for a while. Do you put like essential oil lavender? You in totally it? could. This was I had like. Um, it was like a pack from, I think Joann's or something. It was okay. like dried. 
You know, like when the lavender, like it's like little tiny little seed things. Yeah. It dries and then it's like little seedy looking things that are in like a pack. Ooh. Oh, a pack. And it smells. I'm sure there's a way that it gets dried yeah. to make the smell stay or something, but lavender's such a good smell. I know. And the essential oil. Right. Yeah, you totally could. I'm sure there's a way you could even like dab the fabric with essential oils or like oh, have. Yeah. Or rice, even? yeah, like just like yeah. Does essential oil soak into rice? Okay, so how's this looking? Look at that is awesome. Okay, that and then I go awesome. all the way up here. Yep, I go do all I the way. No, I'd go all the way up there, and then we'll add these finger details at the very end. Cool. I like how even your stitches are. Are you Thank proud? You. This I'm is so proud of this myself. This is the thing with crafting: is you look at and go, "Oh my gosh, I made that." I know. I'm really impressed I'm with myself. Awesome. Because <laughs> sometimes I try these things. I'll try new crafting project like I just tried teaching myself to crochet and then I just like give up after yep, a few times yep. I'm like uh oh, can't do it but this I could do this you can do so um as we're gonna keep I'm gonna finish this little part so I can show you the blanket stitch on the side okay um just so that you can we can keep moving so here we go so yeah are you done with your outside yet? Almost. That's pretty awesome. So the blanket stitch for the side. Don't give up, Kira. You can crochet. You got this. <laughs> Everybody's like cheering you on online. <laughs> this is amazing. All right. So when you're done with all your details, I'm just going to skip a little bit ahead while Kira okay. is still stitching a little bit because I want to explain it and then I'm going to have her do it. So when you're done with all of the details of your hand, um, take off obviously your hand will be attached to the background and pin both sides together and all you have to know is that you will have to leave a little bit of an opening to stuff it okay. but I'm going to give you I'm going to show this and then I'm going to have you do a few stitches while we kind of keep going here so that running stitch absolutely you could do along the edges that running stitch like I said is a is really versatile and it's okay. kind of like the base now that you know that stitch yeah you can kind of do anything I mean really the sky's the limit <laughs> <laughs> like Kim Possible said she can do anything <laughs> Kim Possible that's awesome okay so all right I like to hide all of my stitches I don't want people to see like you can see back here that you can't really, I mean, there's maybe a little giveaway right there. Um, but on the back of these, it's not super obvious where I started and stopped. So just like before, are you at a place where you can stop for just like even, oh, no. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, why don't you pull it all the way through? Okay. Yep, pull it all the way through. There we go. Yep. And then um, I'm going to show you, can you pull, no, keep your needle on, keep your needle on. I'm going to show you this and then you can work on this one a little bit. Okay. So um, just like we did, remember how we anchored our stitch? Actually, can you find what you want for your outside stitch? For a color? Mm-hmm. This outside oh. blanket stitch. Hmm. What would look good with it? You could just do that blue again if you really wanted to, or you could do it darker. What about this? Yeah, love okay. it. Mm -hmm. So cut off a yard, remember, nose to fingertip. Oh, yes. Nose to fingertip. Cut off a yard. Just want to make sure we're making use of our time. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I stand at a fabric store and I'm like measuring. Just doing that whatever. in the store. Yeah, people are like, oh boy, what has happened with her? Okay. So anytime, so remember, let's thread our needle. Or you don't have your needle here. Let's give you this needle right here. Let's just give you two different needles. So here, remember, thread your needle. So fold that in half. Fold your paper in half, yep. And then and put then. your end of your needle in there, or end of your thread in there, and then thread the paper through okay. the needle. What do you think of this length? Yeah, sure. Okay. This, is a, this is an easy way to get, to, to thread your needle. Although the chapstick theory, now I feel like I want to know the chapstick theory. I know, that'll be fun to try. Yep. Oh, you doing it? Ooh, oh, it's so close. Sometimes it without fingernails. Sometimes I don't have. I know I don't have fingernails, <laughs> and it's like you want to just like grab, or maybe tweezers. Maybe I should always just craft with tweezers. Ooh, that'd be good. That'd be good. You got it. You got it. You got Oops. it. I see it. Here, let me help you. Okay, I see it through. Might just be a little big for the eye of the needle. There we go. Just yank it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you this blanket stitch so you have all the skills to finish it later. Okay. So Perfect. we're gonna anchor our stitch again, which remember is a plus and a minus. So remember right. no knots, but plus and minus. So remember how we did the plus? 
Yes. And then the minus. Okay. Right? So all it is is just the sign. Okay. So I'll have to watch you again. Yeah, that's fine. So um, the one thing we have to do is put your background uh, behind so I have both layers of my background okay. together. Mm -hmm. So normally you'd finish all the whole top and then we're going to do the bottom, but just for mm -hmm. time's sake, I'm going to give you a little bit of a quick demo. Okay. Yep. And then do you want to throw a pin between there so that all three layers are together like this? Perfect. Just like that. Love it. Okay. Love it. Is it okay if this is like bent or should I? It's okay. Yeah, okay. mine is a little bit too. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. Um, okay, so we're going to hide our stitch again by doing it in between the layers. Okay. So just pull apart your layers a little bit. And then we're going to do, so do it kind of close to the edge just because we're going to be coming out the side. Okay. Right? So you're going to do a plus sign. So remember in and out, but don't pull too hard. Yeah, or don't pull your thread all the way through. Remember, you're going to yeah. stop it. Is it supposed to be like this? Yeah, so okay. keep going. Yep, keep going. Yep, and remember, don't pull it out of the hole. Okay. Yep, just like that. And then okay. go the other direction to make a plus. So you're going, you went one way, now we're now going this the other way. way. Yep. Perfect. You have all these skills now, just Ooh. after 30 minutes of crafting. I know, I'm so excited. Right? Okay. And that? then you're going to do a minus. So that was a plus sign. So a minus sign is just oh. one more straight across. Okay. So where would I do that? Same at? thing. Just over top. Right over top. Yep. Like that? Yep. Now pull it through. Okay. And now it should be, yep, you're secure, right? So you can, yeah, right? Yep. Okay. So now what we're going to do, and this is just a really simple blanket stitch, and we're not going to go all the way around because I want you to be able to finish the detail on the mm -hmm. top. Now, um, instead of, you can do a running stitch, which is the up, down, yeah. up, down, if you really want to, but I'm gonna show you how to do a blanket stitch. Okay. So come up from the bottom through all, through both layers, right? Okay. And pull, but before you pull all the way through, put your needle back through the, the loop. Just this loop, this thread loop right oh, here. Oh, okay, yep. so this one? Yep, mm -hmm. and then pull a little tight. Like not super crazy tight, but yep, just like that, just like that. Yep, perfect, keep going, keep going. So that it's nice so that the stitch becomes tight to the edge. Okay. Just like that, yep, yep. perfect. A little tiny bit tighter, just so it's nice, there we go. And then go up from the bottom to the top. And then before you pull through, put your needle back through the loop again. Oops. You got it, you got it. I know sometimes going through two layers is a little bit tricky. Looks like a little <laughs> tangled thing in there. A tentacle. Tentacle, yes. There you go. Okay, so then go back through the loop before you this pull. This one? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look it. And so what it's creating is not only does it have the stitch on the top, but it finishes the side. So look at the oh. side of your thing. Look how there's a stitch on the side. Okay, yeah. Look how finished that looks. Ooh. This is called a blanket stitch. So up from the top, or up from bottom to top. Uh, this way or this way? Um, bottom to top. Yep, there we go. Yeah, 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 yep. And then pull again, but before you pull all the way tight, put your needle through the loop. This one? Yep. Look at that. Look at how good that looks. Ooh. And so, so just sort of, if you're a crocheter or a knitter, you know that tension is a word that they use. So the only thing that is interesting to keep in mind is making sure that you're not pulling one stitch really tight mm -hmm. and then one stitch really loose. So as long as it's the same level of tightness or tautness, yeah. you're good. So you just repeat this. So you always come from the bottom. Always come from the bottom okay. to the top on a blanket stitch. And again, practice will come in in learning how to keep it all, um, you know, similar distance okay. away, similar stitch length. And that is the, the whole essence of how to make these plushies is that we have our top piece, which is our, our, our piece sign. We have our background, which consists of two pieces. And all, we're, all we did or all we're doing today is attaching our piece sign to the one layer of the background and then attaching both backgrounds together. So in this case, we attached the literal piece sign <laughs> to the gray <laughs> background and then attached both gray backgrounds together. In this case, I attached the, or, we attach the sauce and the toppings to the 
top of the crust and then we attached both crusts together. Okay. So that's in theory exactly what we're doing. Yeah. So if I didn't, I forgot to go through the loop. That's How okay. can I go that's backwards? Okay. So then all you do to go backwards, this is a great question. All you can ever do is take your needle off and then use your needle to just gently pull the stitch out. Like, just like that, right? Yeah, that looks easy. Yeah. So what you can do though, but so that you don't get going along too far, is um, continue finishing out your detail on top. Okay. But I just wanted to show you that blanket stitch because okay. we're kind of running out of time. But if you have any other questions, please pipe in because we would love to answer them. This has been a fun crafter new. I know. I'm having so much fun. And of course, before you seal everything up, you can use these little bits of extra fabric. You can use stuffing. You can use, like we talked about, dried lavender to fill up your your plushy. But the thing with the thing with stitching and hand stitching that I think is so cool is that it's so versatile, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can mend your shirt, you can make a pillow, you Oops. can make a keychain, you can make earrings. Did it come off? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Um, and I think like the fun part is exactly that of like, it's versatile. You can do anything with it. Hang on, I can't talk. And <laughs> no, you're good. They stitch at the same time, but um, so I hope, I hope today has just more or less inspired you and crafted, you were able to craft along with us today. I have a couple more questions. Um, oh, it's actually just a lot of props to you, Kira. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> These people are like literally cheering you on from the UK. <laughs> Love it. Grandma Pam is here watching you, I guess. Grandma oh, yeah, Pam. my grandma yep. loves the knit, so <laughs> I've always been around the crafting. People from Canada, New Mexico, we had a lot of people watching, cheering you on, really saying that you were doing a great Thank job. Thank you. <laughs> this is my first time, I know. so I'm really proud of myself. I know, it's awesome. So we can fill it with dried lavender or polyfill or put a keychain on it or whatever you feel like Ooh. suits the goal for this. And like I said, the whole idea is just to get crafting and to get out these simple materials, which to me is felt a needle, maybe some pins and some yarn or some thread and mm -hmm. get at it. And it's fun for kids too, man, it's, it's pretty awesome. So do you have any last questions before we I'm sign off? I think, honestly, I'm just having so much fun with this. <laughs> you're gonna be here for the rest of the weekend, probably yeah. just sitting here crafting. Yep. We're all gonna come in on Monday and you're gonna have like a village built in front Literally, of you. I'll have just like a little town of places. <laughs> um, so when it comes down to it, how yes. do I take this off? Awesome, that's a good question. So that is a great question that I didn't mention. So remember how we did our plus and our minus to end our stitch, yeah. right? So go back through the, the back layer. Okay, is it, okay? this looks like, um. Oh, it's okay, it just got, look at it. Oh, there yep, it's just stuck there, you're fine. Okay, so. So I've, go, yep, from the top to the bottom and end. You always wanna hide your stitches. You're gonna end it in between the two layers. There we go, yeah, just like that. And uh -huh. then do another plus and minus. Right here? Yep, right there, over top of each other. Because all that's gonna do is anchor the stitch so that it's nice and, you could do a knot. Again, you mm -hmm. could do a knot if you really, really wanted to. So but just in the back yep, layer again? just in that back layer, exactly. So you know exactly what you're doing. Ooh. You figured it all out. So Kira's gonna keep crafting. Make sure to download the pattern, the PDF pattern. It'll have all the written instructions. Make any comments if you need any, any, any questions, if you have any more questions. But we hope that you had fun crafting with our crafter noon. Crafter noon. Crafter noon. Thanks for joining us.